Yeah. Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the second edition of our weekly developer sync. We're going to go around the room today and get an update from everyone on what they've been working on for the subspace engineering protocol. Um, all right, let's start off with uh, Nizar. Hey, everyone. Um, I was mostly working on the core protocol um, implemented reduced salt predictability uh, that pull request was merged. Um, the other pull request is um, mostly a refactoring uh, just to make the API cleaner. Um, it moves some of the um, logic that was spread out across different crates into SP consensus subspace so we can have nicer APIs um, in the future. And that was a preliminary work for the other changes. Um, I implemented part of uh, part of them. Uh, the other changes are basically um, to replace the way we have uh, our randomness that comes from epochs, uh, the way it was working in BAPE to uh, something that is called C correlation, uh, which is one of the approaches that uh, one of the papers from David say um, uh, suggests. So the first step there was to actually remove epochs from the code base entirely. I just replace randomness with like dummy zero values. The next commit after that will be to introduce the new way of collecting randomness. So the first step there is done. Um, I have like a branch where there is no um, epochs at all in the code base. Uh, I just need to like implement um, the new, the new stuff and had some tests. Uh, so was mostly working on that and also did some some more research on uh, different other protocols and how they can be like how 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 some of the ideas from them can be useful. Um, I think that's it. Great, uh, Nizar, were, have you been able to set up a meeting to cover that uh, discussion on the other protocols? Um, not, not really. Okay. When do you, when do you want to do that? Uh, we can do it later, later today, if you want. Oh, today? Okay. I was thinking like next like, week, uh, another meeting today. Okay. Any, any time really, like depends on your availability mostly. Okay. Um, who else should we invite to that? Um, I think Lu Chang and Oscar. Okay. Would be nice. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe we could set it up for next, well, we're not supposed to have any meetings next week, but maybe we can set it up for the first week of January or sometime next week. This week is like super packed. I, I really can't add any more meetings in. Okay. Yeah, if you could just go ahead and get that on the calendar, um, whenever you think it's a good time, please. Okay. All right. Any questions for Nazar? All right, the chain you're up next. Okay. So. I have been primarily working on the implementation of the experiencing suffering. And uh, yeah, it's uh, already an appending PR like, that is waiting to be reviewed. And uh, I also also I was working on the executor gossip. Mm, yeah, just a little progress that the message now can be sent and be received on the executor uh, gossip network. But yeah, it's a still a work in progress and ha I have a lot of works to do later. Yeah, it's a job to PR and you can like uh, mm, review it and uh, I'm, I'm happy to get some early feedback on that. Yeah, that's it. Anyone have any questions for Lu Chang? All right, thanks for the update. Okay, Sergio up next. Uh, so I've been working on uh, integrating grant validation for uh, subspace node. And uh, specifically, I have added pilot bridge grant uh, from parity bridge uh, bridges uh, common repository and just to make sure that I'm doing the right thing I asked on element 
in the uh, Parity Bridges chat. I described what we want and uh, I asked for clarifications. So they confirmed that uh, this is what we need to use. And uh, they also referred me to one particular branch in the repository. I will check it later. And uh, also I've been working on investigation of uh, the memory leak uh, issue, which happens again on dev and uh, test B, I guess. And uh, I managed to connect uh, a debugger. And uh, it seems to me like it's a polka.js issue because we have like a lot of multiple connections and we are, we are not unsubscribing from those. And uh, I also found a related issue on uh, polka.js uh, repository. And uh, yeah, I, I was thinking about a few workarounds and uh, I will discuss with Nazar what would be the best option for us. Uh, and this is what I'm gonna do next. And uh, also I'm planning to add a new parachains on polka.js which are already live for a relayer backend. Okay, so great. Thanks, Serge. Can you just conceptually walk us through how you imagine the uh, pilot feeds and grandpa bridges is going to interact? Like, what's the data flow? Actually, I don't know yet. That's why I, I was asking on elements. And I will check because uh, they don't have it in the main branch. Uh, of the repository. So they, they have particular implementation in one of the branches. So I haven't checked it yet. Okay, but what do you, I mean, even at a very high level, what do you imagine the workflow is, even if you don't have a specific idea in mind? Well, I think we get our uh, block object in the pilot feeds and we, uh, we get buffer. So we need to like decode it into like a proper struct and then uh, we get all the information like headers from that struct and we apply one of the methods from uh, this pallet bridge grandpa pallet and uh, we emit event like a block is valid or not valid because we cannot reject it at the moment okay Okay, and actually what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to reject it. So if it's not valid, we're, we're going to want to make sure that the feed cannot be appended and that block would actually get discarded in that case. So it's like a validation to actually extend the feed, not just like, is it valid or not? And then we would have like a, you know, still, still store the data, but say, oh, it's just not valid. We just wouldn't actually store the data at all in that case. Okay, I will check if, if that's possible because I, I never tried it. But okay. it will, mm, you'll have to reject the whole block in that case. That's right. Um, you mean subspace block? Yeah. No. Why? Well, because the way you decide whether something can be included in the block or not is basically it's not, based on fee. It's not, can the data be included in the history? It's do we update the feed, the head of the feed, to point to that? Right, but the data will still be physically in the blockchain. That's fine. People can put whatever data they want okay. in the blockchain, but this is just okay. saying what like what does the subspace network say is the head of the Kusama relay chain? Is sure. this okay. validation contract? Uh, so we just we do not update uh, the hash map and we emit another event. So basically this is how we reject. Yeah. Yeah, so so yeah, sorry if that was confusing. We're still storing the data because no matter what that, you know, they paid the fee to get the data in the network. We're just not yeah. going to. Um, Extreme like is successful anyway. Yeah, yeah. It's just, we don't update the head of the feed. Understood. Yeah, great. And, we, and then we also need to decouple the parachain feeds so that those don't get updated unless the relay chain feed gets updated as well. They have to be, I guess it's not really decoupling, it's coupling, because right now they are decoupled. Mm. Well, yeah, that's a whole different story. Yeah, but I mean, it's still a task that needs to be done. We talked about this um, the last time, Serge, you know, where right now the 
the parachain feeds are getting updated completely independent. I mean, they come from the same block, but there's no, no notion of like, well, if the relay chain feed is invalid, then the parachain feeds are invalid, but we need to make it so that now that we can't update, like we're still gonna store the data, but we can't update the feed head for the parachains unless the relay chain is, is also updated. Like as long as they're, they're mapped. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, and then for the new parachains, uh, so we have Polkadot stored on the test net or on the dev net rather. Um, and the last time I recall the, the blocker was there was no Docker images for any of these new parachains. Is that still a problem or do you have a workaround for how to, how to still sync these? We can use this new uh, continuous download script and uh, we can just uh, create archives for uh, new parachains and uh, or just start start uh, syncing right away because the history is not that big like for example i'm looking at akala and it has like thirty thousand blocks less than thirty thousand blocks we can just uh, run relayer and fetch blocks over the network okay i think we should do both so we should just go ahead and run Relayer and fetch over the network, but we should also update the archives in the background so the next time we restart it, we don't have this yep. problem. Um, and, and I'd like you to make that your priority, actually. Um, just anytime okay. there's new parachains or anything that's updating, like on the Relayer side, on the, on the data that we're trying to bring in, we always want to make it a priority to get that can, back into the network as soon as possible. And then extending the functionality of the Relayer would be the next, next highest priority. Okay. Cool. And then as soon as that is working, can you notify Diana and, and the business team? Um, because we need to update the website and everything to reflect that. Yes. And we actually, yeah, we yeah, just yeah. had a call with Brian Chen at Akala yesterday and we were talking about um, Corora or sorry, uh, Akala. Um, and so, you know, pe people, people are kind of asking like, when is this going to be ready? We're going to be doing an, an, an announcement with them in January about this as well. Sure, yeah. Yeah, I will notify Leo first. And uh, after Leo has updated uh, UI, we can notify other team. Awesome. Great. Okay, thanks, Serge. Does anyone else have questions for Serge? Uh, just a comment. There is no update uh, to made in, in the Relayer front end, I think. It's already updated. So changes should be reflected like instantly. No, I, I meant new parachains. After I add new parachains, I will let you know so you can update UI. Oh, okay. Okay, the new parachains. Okay, cool. All right, well, moving to you, Leo. If you could give your update, please. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, well, Related to the subspace library, subspace yes, we got the resolved uh, the last week, the last review, and had this first version release. And yesterday, with Nazar, published the package to npm, uh, but there was like a missing script, and some some files were not included in the package. So we removed the package, and there is a restriction, like uh, related to using a recently removed package with the same name and the same version. So we have to wait like 24 hours uh, to, the, the, to be removed this, to get removed this rest restriction. And I will publish it as soon as possible. So I am waiting. I think that there are still a couple of hours, like 10, 10 hours, I think. And uh, also, uh, working with the examples and on the front end, we found uh, an issue with the Polkadot extension uh, related to the extension injection. And we made a workaround, setting a timeout in the library uh, to fix it, and it's working. 
it's not the best solution, but it works. Uh, but I think that uh, it should be, uh, I should be create an issue on the extension repository to check it uh, in there. Uh, because it's in the library, it's a, a tiny delay between the Web3 injection and the app loading. Uh, and it's really tiny. And I don't know if you got a question into there. Because that's uh, related to the subspace library. Yeah. And also, I have been working adding some slints and some initial testings on the Relayer front end and on the library also, and got some initial GitHub options uh, for the main repository, for the main branch, sorry. And I think that finally I made some updates on the infrastructure. Uh, today we restarted the TSB environment. It was uh, not producing blocks uh, with some issues. Uh, so we updated uh, with the list, last snapshot uh, and the last ar archives also. And I sent an update on the documentation, uh, like changing some Docker Hub reference and like other minimal changes in there. And yeah, I think that for today I will be working in publishing this package, waiting that. Uh, creating this issue in the Polkadot extension and uh, repository, and working in these uh, final testings on the layer and on the library also. Okay, thanks for the update, Leo. What uh, what were the issues with test B? Why why did it need to be restarted? Uh, it was not producing block from a known issue, uh, I think. So it was not using also the latest images, so we had to restart it to, to make it work again from zero, basically. More specifically, there was an edge case in the farmer um, that when recommitment was running, it was possible for the current commitments to be deleted. So when we, we had like one week passed, and recommitments were were happening. We basically deleted current ones, and we were left with the previous one and the next one. And like in between, we don't have anything. That that's why it wasn't producing blocks because there were no commitments. Um, it was fixed since that snapshot, so we just switched to new snapshot and restarted everything. That was like a known issue we discovered with Toscan. Okay. And is which version is the farm net on? Does it reflect that latest snapshot? It is. Okay. Like we have like active and inactive. Inactive is the older one and buggy, but the one that everyone is using should be fixed. Okay, great. Okay, any other questions for Leo? Great, thanks Leo. Okay, uh, Oskin, you're up next. Yeah, uh, I've been working on uh, four different things like Minor updates on all of them, but four. So first of all, documentation. Farmer documentation is separated to another file since readme got huge, as another said. And I test all the uh, commands there, so it should be fine. It should it's double checked. On the subs subspace desktop, um, as I said in Monday, it's working properly at the moment. Um, I prepared a demo. I'm also learning more on the view side, on the front end side, to know uh, to figure out how to pass variables from front end to back end. Uh, I know how to pass from back end to front end, but I'm learning the vice versa thing. And other than that, uh, I was searching some other protocols to get prepared for the next meeting. And today we discovered a new farming bug. Uh, I think I resolved it. Uh, I can submit a PR or whatever uh, i was talking with nazar on that um, that's all on my side okay thanks oskin um for so in the last call we had talked about extending out the functionality for the farmer um so that the existing uh, uh desktop app would, would you know instead of just starting the farmer and it would just work 
but like getting it so that it would work as you went through the screens. So is that what you're saying? You're doing the research on the front end to make that part work? That part is working. So uh, you select everything and when you click finish, it says connecting. And at that part, it connects to node and it's the farming starts. So it actually makes sense right now. The thing I am start, um, researching on is how to pass some parameter from front end to back end so that we can configure the plot size so that uh, the farmer binary, so the library, sorry, farmer library can know it and adjust the plotting size accordingly. Okay. Um, have you have you reached out to Sergio Leo for help with either of those tasks? Uh, no. Okay. Yeah. Let's just like um, if if you're unfamiliar with how to do something on the JavaScript side, instead of researching it yourself, just um, ask ask for help. Sure. Um, sure. Uh, so I guess it sounds like it, you completed that task then to get the farmer workflow matching. Yeah, and the, I've the also prepared them all. Okay, and yeah. we're going to go over that in the next call. Great, great. That just wasn't clear. That's awesome. Great. Okay, thanks. No problem. Any questions for Oscar? All right, Justin, you're up next. Awesome. Um, my biggest priority over the past couple of days has been getting the team up and running with the um, FarmNet. Uh, noticed that Windows 11 wasn't working, so I was working with Nazar a little bit yesterday to try and get uh, Windows 11 build going. I've got a PR submitted to that. I think there's still some slight changes we'll have to do to make it actually pass all the tests and everything. Um, so that's going to be my biggest focus. Uh, I know the development team, we'd like to get you guys running as well. If you need any help, feel free to reach out, but I'm sure you guys got it. Um, hopefully by the end of today, though, we should have all of the the business team running, and I can start to move into um, ambassadors from there. Uh, another thing I've been working on has been the code signing with the um, Subspace Desktop app. I unfortunately lost the private key when I accidentally blew up my Linux install a few months ago, so I'm having to re-request from the SSL website. No, not additional charges or anything. You just have to wait for support to get back to me. Um, once they get back to me, though, I should be able to submit the PR and get that code signing fully submitted and good to go. Um, that's been my biggest focus over the past couple of days. Moving forward, just going to get the rest of the team running and get the ambassadors going. Okay. When you say you lost the private key, you mean the private key for Windows code signing only? Correct. Okay. And what, what are you changing in your process to prevent that from happening again? Well, the first mistake was I initially requested it from Linux, so that just kind of adds complexity to the whole thing. Um, in this case, I'm doing it from Windows, the proper request route, and I'm backing up the private key onto Bitwarden this time so it doesn't happen again. Does anybody that I did initially. Have, does anybody else have access to that private key? Um, not at this time, no. Okay, I think you, we should make sure that at least one other person, there should be a primary and alternate for all these private keys and not just you. Definitely, yeah, I'll get it um, put into the organization and shared with proper people. Okay, and let's make that uh, OSKIN will be the alternate for all of these private keys. Okay. okay. Great. Okay, sounds good, Justin. Any Any questions for Justin? Okay, um, really no updates on my side from the engineering other than what we've already talked about. So um, just focusing on fundraising and some other things right now. Any questions for me? Okay, anything else we need to discuss as a group? All right, thanks everybody for watching. Hope you guys have a ha happy holidays. We won't be seeing you again for about a week and a half. We're taking a break next week from our regular meeting schedule. Um, we'll have some other meetings published in the meantime, but in terms of the dev sync, it'll be is that January the 4th, I think is the next one. Actually, no, January the 5th. Yeah. All right. See you guys next time.